Hello, I'm Johnny and welcome back. Take 101. <laughs> Not really, but I think I've just had a babble fest. Tried to do two videos and I'm just babbling about nothing. So this video is going to be really good. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so this is a video about the scroller challenge. And I just want to um, tell you about my opinions of using these products so i love these um when i done my artwork i just use them as you would watercolors i just did a light wash and i only used two of the colors because that's all i needed um the fine liner i mean it's nice to use in that but it is a bit chunky and when i like to go around my artwork i like um I usually use a micron and it's like a skinnier one. But um, I found if you held the pen off the paper slightly and only tried to go lightly, you could achieve a thinner line, but my hand was shaking. So, but I think it's turned out all right. Um, it's a bit thick in places. Um, yeah, so that's them. I really like them. Fortunately, I didn't have to use this much um because i don't like it it seems to smudge the pencil uh the pencil yes yeah, fine it's a pencil uh the paper i really liked the paper because um i don't as i said i done a light wash of watercolor and it held the uh water really well i had it taped down the board and it only buckled slightly and the paper it's gone well flattish so i will be using this more in the future for light washes of watercolour so that's the products this um the prompt i absolutely love that fascinating folklore because the things i found out today fascinated me so i will get into this i've wrote notes and i've got my laptop near me because i just don't want to babble on like i normally do so I'll show you. This is my artwork. Poor monkey, it's been hung. So I will tell you the origins of the story, the background, some fun and wacko facts about where I'm from. So I live in a little, well, it used to be a little years ago, but they keep on expanding it. Um, a little village a fishing village slash town called Hartlepool um, and we often regarded as Hartlepudlians and don't pronounce the letter H in Hartlepool well people who I work with and my friends and that don't pronounce the, the H but I always do um, yes and if you type in what is Hartlepool famous for it comes up straight away monkey hangers um and this is because our ancestors hung a monkey because they thought it was a french spy because they hadn't seen a french person before well that's what i was led to believe while i was growing up so i've done my research into it and i'll tell you what i've found So firstly, I'll just tell you this bit because I think this is interesting. Um, so this is what we're well known for in Hartlepool, uh, fishing, because we live on the coast. And the best place to go for your fish is Hodgson's Fish, W. Hodgson. So I'll just tell you a brief history about them. Did I say at the beginning this was going to be like a little history class and fun fact? Right, so it says in 1850 when Samuel Cornelius Hodgson developed a smokehouse in the area of West Hartlepool, locally known as Wagga. The business thrived for over half a century until a Zeppelin bomber bombed and destroyed it in the First World War. In 1916, Samuel's son, William Thompson Hodgson, founded a new fish 
new fish merchant business and open premises in Whitby Street, Hartlepool, a thriving commercial part of the town and quickly established excellent rep reputation. Oh, just can't get me words out today. William's son and namesake William Mellon Hodgson joined the business in 1947 after serving in the RAF in India, followed by a spell <coughs> as a football player. <coughs> God, I'm losing my voice. <coughs> for Hartlepool United. In 1969, William Allen Hodgson, known as Allen, joined his father William in Whitby Street to learn the fish trade and took over the reins to manage the business in 1974. And although Allen's father retired at that stage, he was still very much involved with Hodgson's fish until he passed away in 1997, aged 89. In 1998, Alan masterminded a new purpose-built factory on the Fish Quay in the Headland. That is a lovely place, the Headland. Um, which subs subsequently became the main headquarters of the business, although Whitby Street Store is still thriving. Today, the firm is run by Alan's children, Jill and Peter, and Alan's support and the operation now employs in excess of 50 people and delivers some of the UK's leading restaurants, hotels and fish merchants. I've just read that from the laptop. You'd think I'd read it better, wouldn't you? But <coughs> lost for words at times. You know what? I'm feeling a bit nervous. Maybe it's because um, I've lived in Hartlepool all my life and... Ooh... Getting the heebie-jeebies here. So online, there's a, I clicked on the images, and there's various images of all these um, village folk hanging a poor little monkey. And there's, oh yeah, there's a statue down um, Middleton Marina. And it's of a monkey. I thought it was holding a ball. I haven't took much notice in the past when I've seen it. And it seems to be... Um, holding a ledger and there's various other things i can see even jewelry i mean who wants to wear a poor monkey around your neck hanging earrings and uh, crazy i didn't even know there was all of this but i guess the tourists love it don't they um so this is what else i've found oh my god on youtube i've just found a um it's like a song um, so if you're interested in that, I'll put the links below the video. It's uh, funny. <laughs> so I found this bit and it says, The earliest connection of Hartlepool with this tale is a Victorian popular sp song inspired, possibly inspired by a Scottish ditty of 1772 in which a monkey, a sole shipwreck survivor, was hanged so the villagers could claim salvage rights. Whatever its origins, the story is now a source of local pride. I mean, I believe that's a story more than um, thinking the poor monkey was um, a French spy. But how would they... Uh, oh, I'll have to look later. How would they claim salvage rights by hanging a monkey? Oh, yes, I see. So when there's a, a shipwreck, if if there's like survivors, they claim the rights down there. But if there's no survivors, uh, wherever port the ship sinks on, the first person who gets to the shipwreck, I suppose they claim the rights down there. Oh, yeah. So a poor monkey. Um, 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 um. Oh yes, and we're also known for having a football team and I didn't realise that they've got a mascot called Angus Angus, and that's named, uh, not named, it's um, in honour of the monkey that was hung, I don't know. <laughs> yes, um, anything else? Oh, and I found out the... I don't know if it's the name of the ship or what. It says, a French ship of the type chassis Marie was wrecked in a storm off the coast of Hartlepool. 
there's so many uh, things. You could be here all day, couldn't you? Doing the research. You can even get stickers for your car. <laughs> Watch this bit here. Monkey Hanger is a colloquial, I don't know how to pronounce that, nickname by which people from the town of Hartlepool, England, are sometimes known. Well, I prefer not to be called a monkey hanger. Just use me name, Johnny. Oh, yes, and this is another thing. Um, we're also known for the canoe man. Um, uh, it's just about a man and his wife tried to, well, yeah, they did. They um, f faked his death so they could claim insurance money. BBC made a TV series of this, but in my opinion, I don't think it's that accurate. First of all, they came from Seton Carew, but on the TV series it was a headland and they made out as if they lived in a small house um, and they were quite poor, when in actual fact they lived in Seton Carew, right on the seafront, in a massive house. Um, yeah, so what they did, he apparently um, rode out to the sea on a canoe and his family phoned the police and said he didn't return so they had a search party out looking for him and couldn't find him so he was presumed dead but in actual fact he, the, they'd built a secret room and he'd been living in this secret room and his, his two sons didn't even know about it I mean fancy doing that to your own sons letting them think you're dead so, um, yes, him and his wife got the insurance money and they went abroad. Um, and five years later, he came back to Hartlepool, walked into a police station and claimed he had amnesia. So he'd done a Harold Bishop there, didn't he? Because didn't Harold Bishop, um, um, they thought he'd drowned and years later he came back and he'd been living a whole different life. Yes, so yeah. So when people ask you where you're from, you say Hartlepool. You either get monkey hanger or canoe man. Or I'd rather be known for something positive than stuff like that. Um, and now is that all I wanted to cover? I will just have another scramble through. Oh yes, and I suppose I could have drew the monkey wearing a French uniform. Well, I was going to, but in uh, my previous sketch, it just didn't look very good. Um, so, but if I if I had done that, I would have been able to use the rest of the colours in the box. But um, I'm not that good at sketching anyway, so I probably it wouldn't have turned out as good as I would have hoped. Now I'm going to end this video before I just babble on for the sake of it. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all I've got to say. I'm going to um, have a look through this video and if I do babble on too much, I will delete it and do another one. Um, thank you for watching. I hope it's been enjoyable. Um, Johnny signing out. See you, bye.